Hey there, hobby friends. I'm Jared, and this is Caffeinated Miniatures. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I am not a very good painter. I'd put most of my work in the good from far, but far from good category. I'm mostly just slapping paint over top of gray plastic, so I have painted minis on the tabletop for my games of Age of Sigmar, Warcry, or Dungeons and Dragons. I am painting to play. So it's a constant balancing act between trying to improve my painting skills and just getting the damn things on the tabletop. So rather than spending hours upon hours trying to perfect every single thing on every model, I just focus on one area or particular skill for each model or project. Enter this Druanti model, stage left. I liked this gulp from the moment I saw it and knew I needed to paint it. And I kind of thought the horns and those wings would be great places to try to create nice, smooth gradients over or under additional textures. For this project, I wanted to build up that gradient with glazing, essentially using very thin down, diluted paint to gradually build up the opacity of the darker color over the lighter base coat. Creating that smooth gradient. Obviously adding the texture on those wings and those horns was going to be a little more difficult than just doing it on a flat base, but after this practice, I was ready to give it a shot. With all that in mind, I set off on this model. In order to get full brush access to the wings, I had two sub-assemblies, Druanti and the Zephyr Spite. I primed everything with gray sear and started in on the Zephyr Spite. Beginning with light sea gray, I base coated the wings, aiming for a smooth, consistent layer. Then threw down some Achillean green on the body and the army fingery things. Then it was time for some glazing. I further diluted Achillean green with water and slowly started building the opacity, aiming to create those darkest areas next to the arm fingery business. This takes several laps. Personally, I have found three key points to keep in mind when glazing. First, controlling the amount of paint and fluid on the paintbrush. By loading the brush, then touching it to some paper towel, I'd remove most of the excess fluid. Second, starting the brush stroke where I want the least amount of paint, and finishing where I want the darkest or richest, deepest color. Wherever the brush leaves the model is where the greatest amount of paint or pigments will be deposited. Finally, patience. Try not to do too strong of a layer with each pass, and make sure that the previous layer is completely dry before moving on to the next one. Once I was fairly happy with that gradient, I slapped on some highlights with Vallejo, Light Sea Grey, and Cold White. Then built up some highlights on the body with a mix of Vallejo, Turquoise, and Ivory. And I was ready to move on to Duranti. I will say if I were to do this again, I'd keep that head separate. It would have just made painting it uh, just a lot easier. But I wasn't about to cut it off, so away I went. Using Aethermatic Blue Contrast Paint, I base coated the skin, helmet, hair, shield, and weapon. Layering up with Vallejo Light Sea Gray, then mixing in Cold White and finishing with Pure Cold White for the brightest highlights. Then moved on to my next focus point, the horns. Like with the wings, I started off with a clean, even coat of light sea gray. After glazing the wings, I had a much better idea of what I was gonna do. I started with further diluted aethermatic blue, glazing towards the bottom. Then I mixed in some Achillean green, covering less of the surface. Finally, I used straight Achillean green to really darken the bases. Once all that was good and dry, I added highlights with light sea gray and cold white. 
using more and more cold white on those brightest areas towards the tips. Then to kind of unify everything again, I went back in with a glaze of Ithermetic Blue and Achillean Green, followed by straight Achillean Green at the base once again. Moving on to the branchy, barky, tree-y bits, I followed the same recipe I worked out with the Branch Witch. After base coating those areas with Basilicanum Grey, I started building up the volumes with Citadel, Stormbrim, and Fur. Mixing in more and more cold white to those highlights. For the leafy cape or skirt, I guess, I went with some warmer brown tones. I threw down a base coat of snakebite leather contrast paint, doing a second lap over some of those darker areas, like the deepest recesses in those folds. I went back in with Vallejo medium flesh tone to work in some of those mid tones. Then mixed in more and more ivory as I worked up to the brightest highlights. After finishing up some of the remaining items and details, I finished up with the gems all around the sculpt. I thought blue gems kind of worked well here. I covered the whole gem with my darkest blue and then worked up the highlights kind of opposite from where the light would enter them. Finishing up with a couple of white dots. Now, just as I was about to glue the Zephyr Spite to the back of Druanti, I noticed that those weird little texture bits on Duranti's back were actually the legs of the Zephyr Spite, which in hindsight, of course they were. Regardless, I quickly painted the legs to match the body and finished gluing it all together. Then I slapped some paint on the base to match the base of the branch, which I had just completed. And glued Duranti into its final spot. And well, here we are. Well, there you have it, another completed model that I'm relatively happy with. I absolutely feel like I made some progress with my glazing. After finishing the horns, I really felt like I could have done a much better job painting the wings. However, I'm just gonna leave it all as is and just take that experience forward with me, continuing my ongoing effort to suck slightly less with each brushstroke. So, how did I do? How do you go about trying to get better? Or are you just happy to have some color on the tabletop? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you made it this far, you are a bloody legend. While you're here, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really is the best and easiest way to help this channel out. Thanks again for watching. You are awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.